Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our online worship service. Let's all rise and prepare our hearts as we come to worship God. Let's come to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, we come to you with a humble heart, asking you to cleanse us from all our sins. We ask for your Holy Spirit to lead us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I will read from Psalms 136, verse 1 to 4. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the gods of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To Him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. Lord, indeed you are good and your love endures forever. Lord, we give a worship and adoration to you, Lord. Let your name alone be exalted in this place, O oh God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God.
thank you for your goodness and mercy upon our lives, Lord. That you never fail, so oh God. That all of our days, so oh God, are held in your hands. We will sing of your goodness, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We praise you.
Let us prepare our hearts as we worship the Lord through the giving of our tithes and offering. Let's all together read the verse from the scripture and our response to God's word. John chapter 8 verse 12 Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Let us read our response to God's word. As I give in today's offering, I proclaim that Jesus is the light of the world. I will follow him and walk in his wondrous, holy ways. Jesus is the light of my life as he is the eternal light. May his light shine brightly through me in this dark world. Amen. 
Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, we worship you and praise your name. We thank you for your unfailing love and faithfulness to us. Truly, Lord, you never leave nor forsake us. Father, as we give our tithes and offering today, cleanse our hearts. May there always be joy in us, knowing that whatever we have comes only from you. Help us, O Lord, to be good stewards of your blessing, shining your light throughout the world. May the tithes and offering we give today be used mightily in the furtherance of your kingdom. We give you back all the glory and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. A very good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us in our online worship service. It's a privilege that uh, we are once again gathered in our different homes and, and studying God's Word together. Let's continue to pray uh, on how we would move forward and how the government and even the church leadership so that we can once again and plan how we can come back here and worship together. You know, in life, we all need help. From the day we were born until we grow up and have gray hair or losing our hair, we all need help. We all need help from others to overcome the challenges, the struggles, and pain in our life. You know, no one can say that he is self-sufficient. But in reality, since we were born until now, until, until you grow old, we need the help from others. Let me give you an example, like a baby. When the baby was born, he needed his mother to feed her, her to put her to sleep, to, to take care of her. And, and the baby is helpless. He can't do, she can do anything. At the same time, when you grow old, when you become weak and started to lose your strength, you need someone to push the wheelchair for you so that you can go to certain places that you need to go. And as we grow up, from a child, we become a young boy. And there are times we will fall, like this picture I'm showing you. This boy was trying to ride a bicycle, but he fell. We need people. We need our fathers to help us rise up again. And as we grow older, we need more people who have expertise. There are times we, we need advice from people like lawyers to help us. And there are moments also that we are broken. We need a friend, a counselor, a pastor that will comfort us and encourage us. And there are many more in our aspect in life that we need help. And if you've been following our Bible reading, we are now in the book of John. And we will see how Jesus prepared the disciples before he would go to the Father. He was assuring them that they will receive heavenly help through the Holy Spirit. And I have entitled this sermon, Divine Counselor. And we will be reading from John chapter 14 and selected verses from 14 and 16. But if you have time, take time to read the whole chapter of 14, 15, and 16 to understand and to unpack the truth that God is telling us, to have a clear understanding of the text. So let's read together John chapter 14, verse 15. We read, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. 
And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Verse 25, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Chapter 16, verse 13. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this afternoon that we can look into your word. And I pray, Lord, that we would take time to surrender our hearts to you. We need your Holy Spirit to make your words be clear. But what we desire, Lord, as a church is to experience your power and your might in this time that we will study your word. Lord, I pray that you will convict our heart. At the same time, encourage our hearts as we look into your words today. So have your way this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You see, the author of the book of John is John the Beloved. And he's one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. He also wrote the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and the book of Revelation. According to the Understanding the Bible Commentary Series, one way the book of John was structured or divided is into two sections. The first section is this. In chapter 2 to 12, the focus was Jesus' public ministry. The focus and the attention was directed towards the world, the religious festival, the crowd, the religious authorities in synagogue. So the first few chapters, chapter 2 to 12, was focused on Jesus ministering outside. But in the later chapter, chapter 13 to 21, it was a private ministry that was what we can see. It was a time where Jesus was giving his farewell discourses. And you can see in chapter 13 and 17, which, in which our text was taken. This private ministry that he had with his disciples can be divided into two parts. The first part is before he was crucified. He called them in, they had their Passover, and then he shared his arts to them. And then the later part, when he, he died and he rose again, he had the time to bid his farewell and gave his commandment to them. So this is very important in this chapter 13 to 21 for us to take note. And in these particular verses that we have read, the, the conversation that Jesus was having with the disciple was very important because he's preparing them. And during this intimate dialogue, Jesus shared many things. He shared on how to be a servant. That's why he went and washed the disciples' feet in chapter 13. And then in chapter 13, you also notice in the later part, Jesus was telling them the new commandment. And the new commandment is about loving God and loving your neighbor. In chapter 15, Jesus spoke to them about the true vine, that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches, that we are called to abide in him so that we will bear much fruit. And the Father is the vine dresser. In this intimate dialogue, Jesus also prepare the heart of the things that will come, that the world will hate them, that they will be persecuted. And you can read that in chapter 15 and 16. In the last chapter, in chapter 17, Jesus prayed. It's a prayer of unity. He was praying that the disciple be united, like how Jesus and the Father were one. And as we look in this text, in this uh, farewell discourse, there were many repeated themes that we will notice. They, they were theme of about the Trinity, how 
God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit operates, how God calls us, how Jesus calls us to love and, and follow His commandment. And also the emphasis was the, the work of the Holy Spirit. As He was having His intimate dialogue, Jesus also told them what will happen to Him. They told him, them that He will be betrayed, that one of the disciples will betray him. And also, he's telling them that he will be going away to the Father. Now, I'm trying to imagine as Jesus pour out his heart, what will be in the minds of the disciples in, 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 that's running in their minds in the heart? I would say a few things that's, that's happening, and I believe this is the things that's happening in their hearts and minds. First, they were perplexed. They were confused because they, were, they don't know what, why Jesus is saying all these things. They have an idea that Jesus will be the Messiah, the King. But suddenly Jesus said that he'll be going away. They were perplexed. They were confused. At the same time, they were afraid and full of fear. Jesus said to them that they will be persecuted. Ngayon, pag, pag may nagsabi sa'yo na, mapepersecute ka, nakatakot yun. Hindi basta-basta. And normally, when you said goodbye, ang gusto mo, yung masarap, yung, oh, sige ha, don't worry, meron kang ganito. Eh, si, si Jesus, talagang dineretso niya, you will be persecuted. At the same time, I believe the disciples were feeling abandoned. They felt abandoned because their master is leaving. However, Jesus was preparing them so that they will be ready and will not fall away. He was giving them a promise that they will not be alone. He promised that He will send a helper. In verse 16, He says, I will ask the Father and He will give you another helper to be with you forever. The word there, parakletos, can be translated as counselor, helper, someone that will comfort, an advocate, an intercessor. You know, in the midst of the challenging time, the uncertainties that the disciple will be having, Jesus promised them that there will be another like him that will be there to help them. Hence, in the midst of their confusion, the Holy Spirit will teach them and guide them. In the midst of fear and persecution, the Holy Spirit will empower them. In the midst of sorrow and feeling abandoned, the Holy Spirit will comfort them. Point number one that we can learn from this is this. That the Holy Spirit teaches us and guides us. As we read in our text, one particular praise that was always repeated by Jesus is this statement. He will say this in John 14, 15. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then he repeated again in verse 23. Jesus answered him. He said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and, he be, and we will come to him and make our home. With him. Now, as I look at this, how did the connection between the Holy Spirit and God's commandment connect? You know, we must understand that they were called to be disciples. And in ancient times, a disciple is one that will imitate the life and the teaching of the masters. Not like our term today, the teacher and student. You know, students today will just listen and after that they will forget what they will learn. They will just listen from books. But during the time when, when God said, when Jesus said, you will be my disciple, it means you become like me. You will follow me. You will follow my life. You will follow the way I live. And that's why Jesus is reminding them that they are disciples. However, Jesus spent three years with the disciples. In those three years, you notice, in those three years that Jesus was with them, guess how many of them passed? Sige, sagot. Oh, walang nakakinig. Wala kasing tao dito. 
How many of them pass? None of them pass. Notice their life is nowhere near to the life of Jesus. You read how the disciples were interacting. They were fighting and competing for position. Some said, I want to be in the right hand and he'll be in the left hand. They were competing for position. And they, they, at times, they, they would quarrel with one another. I want to be the first. I want to be the second man after Jesus. And then they react in compulsion. There are times that they were so afraid and they were, they were just atulin ni Peter. Sabi niya, Lord, Lord, hindi kita iiwanan. I cross my heart. Promise to you. Some of them lack faith. During the storm, you see how they were so afraid. When there's a lot of crowd and Jesus said, feed them, how, what, what was the response? The first initial response is to count their money. They were counting how much they have. None of them are living like Christ. They lack understanding and they were so confused in many things that Jesus was teaching them. Like in this farewell discourse, remember when Jesus were washing the disciples' feet? What was Peter said? What did Peter say? Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He don't get, get what Jesus was doing. Like Thomas in John 14, Thomas said to him, he said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? They don't understand what Jesus was saying. And even Philip, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. In verse 9, Jesus said to him, I have been with you for so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? So they are confused. They don't know. Yet Jesus, in the last days that he in his physical form, he repeated their calling to be a disciple. Someone that would love God. Someone that as they love God will be proven by their obedience to God's commandment. And God's commandment covers every details of their lives. Their lifestyle, their pursuit, their purpose, their aim, their duties and responsibility. However, if you ask ourselves today to love God and wholeheartedly obey His commands, it is impossible for us to do it in our strength. Just look at the disciples. After this, when Jesus was taken away, they said, we are committed to you. The disciples dis dis disappeared, they dis dispersed. Jesus said, uh, Peter said to Jesus, I will not leave you, but he ran away. He betrayed Jesus. You know, their love for Jesus was skin deep. It's just merely words. In their own ability, they can never love God and obey God's commandment by their own strength. That's why Jesus said in verse 16, He said, I will ask the Father, and He will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. In verse 26, it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Jesus spent three years with them, teaching them, telling them God's truth. And he know that in, in their frailty, they will forget what they have, they have learned from him. But Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would remind them of what they have learned from Christ. You know, Jesus spoke to them verbally through words. And the Holy Spirit reminded them to them. In our time today, we might not hear verbally, but we have God's word that's speaking to our hearts. And the Holy Spirit will remind us His teaching. You know, in Old Testament, there is a prophecy. A prophecy. In Ezekiel 36, verse 26 to 27, it says here, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone 
from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. It is promised in the word of God that God will give us a new heart and a new spirit. As we have this new heart and a new spirit, then we can love God and obey His commandments. You know, I tell you, we can read a lot of books. We can read the Bible every day. But I notice as you grow old, you begin to forget. Lama no, Kuya Arnold. The more you read, siya lang kausap ko ngayon, si Kuya Arnold. Kailangan ko na interaction eh. There are times you forget what you learn. There are times you forget God's principle, God's promises. There are times you forget God's, the story that we have read in our meditation, in our reading. Have you ever experienced that the, the reading you had a few months ago suddenly hit your heart? There are moments that you're in hardship and then your devotion ten, uh, five months ago remind you that God is there. There are times that we forget, but the Holy Spirit will remind us His truth. There are times when we were tempted and we've gone into fall into sin. The Holy Spirit will remind the commandments of God to live in righteousness, in holiness, to, real, to live a life that would please and pleases Him. The Holy Spirit will teach us and guide us. The Holy Spirit, we cannot do it in ourselves. We can never say that I am good or I am perfect. We need God's grace and mercy. We need the Spirit of God to work in our life, teaching us and guiding us. And as He teach us and guide us, then we will be able to love God and obey His commandments. First thing we learn, the Holy Spirit teaches us and guides us. Secondly, He will also empower us. As Jesus saying his goodbye, he is giving also an idea what will happen to them. Like I mentioned earlier, masarap yung mga magandang goodbye. Yung alam nyo, aalis ako, masarap, ganito ang buhay nyo. Pero ang sinabi ni Jesus sa kanila, ito eh. Verse 18, sabi niya, If the world hates you, I know that he has hated me before it hated you. Verse 20, if they persecute me, they will also persecute you. Oh. Disciples ni Lord Yan, derechuhan. Oh. If, you persec- if they persecute me, you will also be persecuted. In verse 16, it says here, I have said all these things to keep you from falling away. See, see you, know, you know, Jesus do not sugarcoat his words. He is direct. And here you can see what he says. He says, in verse 2, they will put you out of synagogue. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he's offering service to God. Jesus was preparing their heart to face the persecution, to face the hatred that they were experiencing, to face the challenges as they spread the good news, to face the rejection. But this is what Jesus promised. He said here in verse 26, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will bear witness about me. The Holy Spirit will remind the commandments of Christ and who is Christ in our life. At the same time, this Holy Spirit, and when He comes, He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. You know, the early church grew not in an ideal situation. They were in a tough and challenging time. Yet God's kingdom continued to grow, not because of the intellect 
of the disciples, not because of the wheat, but because of the power of God that's working in them. They were weak. They were frail. They have so much limitation, yet God showed His power through them, through the Holy Spirit. Remember how Peter, Peter betrayed Jesus, and in the book of Acts, you see how God used him so mightily. In the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit filled, took over, touched his lips, and they says there he has boldness to preach the good news with power. And the same us today. Are we bold enough to share the gospel in this time? You know, try confront someone who is living in sin, maybe a friend or a family member. They will hate you and despise you, even though you're, you are sincere towards them. But you know, the Holy Spirit will help us in what we're going to say. And we know as we speak the truth towards them, as we pray, as Lord, convict the heart, convict the mind, touch the heart, that they will experience your spirit. We will face challenges in life in this time where so many things happening. But remember this, in times of persecution or hardship, we have the power of the Holy Spirit that will help us overcome those battles. We learn that the Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit empowers us to declare who Jesus Christ is. And lastly, the Holy Spirit will comfort us. Notice in their conversation, Jesus knew what was happening in their heart. They are full of sorrow. In John 6, it says here, in John 16, 6, but because I said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. In verse uh, chapter 14, 27, Jesus knew that their hearts were troubled and they were afraid. Jesus knew what they were feeling, that they felt abandoned like a child and now they feel, probably they feel like an orphan. In verse 18, in chapter 14, Jesus said, I will not leave you as an orphan. Jesus knew the condition. You know, an orphan is someone who has no parents, no one looking after. The disciples were losing someone that they held so dearly to the point that they feel abandoned, unprotected, helpless, like a little child. But in spite of all the things that they were my experience, this is what Jesus promised to them. Jesus promised that in verse 18, he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. The word I will come to you can be interpreted in two ways. That Jesus will come as he die, he will resurrect, he will come again. And the other interpretation is this. As he ascend to the Father, he will send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will glorify Christ and remind us who, in, in Christ in our life. God will not leave us like an orphan. You know, one beautiful thing in Romans 16, it says here, the Spirit himself bear witness within our spirit that we are children of God. Knowing that we are God's children, therefore, it reminds us that we are not alone. Jesus promised in, in verse 27, in 14, he says here, peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world give, gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You know, there's a difference between the way Greek and Hebrew talk about peace. The Greek or the way we interpret, interpret peace is this. Peace to the Greek is the absence of war and trials. But to the Hebrew, 
peace means is having the right relationship with God. And when you have that right relationship with God, you have that peace with God and the peace of God in your heart. There are times that we may be alone in our trial times, but remember these brothers and sisters. God has sent His Holy Spirit to comfort us, to help us, in those times, the Holy Spirit will be with us forever. The Holy Spirit will dwell in our lives. The Holy Spirit will be with us. As I conclude, the Holy Spirit teaches, the Holy Spirit empowers, the Holy Spirit comforts us. The Holy Spirit will teach us and guide us so that we may live in His truth. And as we live in His truth, we will know His commandments. And as we live in His commandments, then it is evidence that we love God. Empower us in times that we are facing hardship. As we declare Christ in this period, we need the Holy Spirit so that when we speak, we speak about Christ. When we talk, when we deal with people, our life will be a witness for Jesus Christ. At the same time, the Holy Spirit will comfort us so that we may have that peace like a child. Before I pray, I would like to end by reading a testimony of an orphan. And this is an, a, a story of a, a lady, that, a young child that was taken to, in, taken to an orphanage. And her name is Dasa. And this is her when she was young. And she was taken to, in an orphanage. And I would just like to read her testimony. She said, I wish I could take your hand and walk you through the ruins of my life before Hope rebuilt it. Hope is the organization that took her in. She said, I was born out of wedlock. My father rejected me because I was not a boy. And my mother abandoned me shortly after because I became, became an obstacle in her life. And the next few years of my life were spent bouncing from family to family, being told that I was worthless, nothing but a mistake that my parents made. And she said, I felt as if I was chained down in darkness, as if my destiny was forever tied to rejection, loneliness, and hopelessness. I was stranded between my unwanted past and my inevitable fall into the emptiness of my future. And then she entered the orphanage and after nine years has passed, she said these things. She said, one of many things I know is that I'm not a mistake because God is so perfect, He never makes mistake. A hand of hope reached out and touch my orphan soul because I believe that my life was about to end. I was redeemed by His love to His people here on earth. And this is her, her picture now. You know, we might not be like Dasa who, who experienced losing a parent or feeling an orphan being passed around to families and families. But you know that we can be like an orphan in our hearts. Empty alone. Facing life alone. You're the only breadwinner in your family and you're working here in Singapore and you're couscous piga and, and you have so much problem back home and you're feeling alone like an orphan. Probably you're one of the person that's listening to this sermon in your room, lonely, 
alone. And there are times we have struggles in life that we have to do it by ourselves. Feeling alone like an orphan. But you know what, brothers and sisters? Jesus promised this. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you. What is the situation that you are in right now? Remember this. The Holy Spirit, God will come to you. Reminding you that you're not alone in your struggles. Not alone in your hardship. That the Holy Spirit is in you. Helping you. And God's promise is there. That he will, you will know Him. For He dwells within you. And He will be with you forever. Some of us Christians have been Christian for a long time. Yet our walk is like alone. God is calling you to Himself and experience the fullness of His Spirit in our lives. Brothers and sisters, remember that the Holy Spirit is our counselor, our help, our comforter. And He dwells in each one of us. And may we face each day knowing that He's in us. So may we be, be filled with the Spirit. And as we're being filled with the Spirit, the Bible says that Christ is, the Holy Spirit will glorify Christ. All the more we fall in love with Jesus. And we abide in Him. As we abide in Jesus, we will bear much fruit. As we bear much fruit, the Father is pleased and glorified. May we come to the Lord today. If you're feeling alone, helpless, weak, we know God is there with you. And He will empower us, He will teach us, and He will guide us and comfort us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time that we can look upon your word. You know, Lord, the struggle of, of our, my brothers and sisters. But we set our eyes on you and we hold on your promises that we are not alone because you are with us through your spirit, dwelling in our lives. And I pray that you remind us each day Help us, Lord, to walk and live in the Spirit. Fill us, Lord, with your Spirit. Fall afresh in us, O oh God. Hallelujah. Let's worship Him. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fall afresh on me. Fill me with your power. Satisfy my need. Satisfy my need. Only you, only you can make me whole. Yes, Lord, give me strength. Give me strength to make me grow. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fall afresh on me. Fall afresh on me. Only you can make me whole. Only you can make me whole. Give me strength to make me grow. Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Come, live in me. 
come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me, yes, Lord. And I will rise on eagle's wings, on eagle's wings. Come live in me all my life, all my life. Take over, take over. Come breathe in me, and I will rise on. Lord, thank you for your promise that we are not alone, that your Spirit is dwelling in each one of us, your children. You know, the struggles that we are facing each day at work, in our families, back home in the Philippines, Lord, we thank you that we know that we are not orphaned, Lord, that we are, you are with us. And I pray for my brothers and sisters that are going through a tough time right now. Remind them, Lord, that you are with them. No matter where they are, may they be in the room, Lord God, in, outside or in, in the living room, studying your word, joining us in this service. Lord, I pray that you manifest in their hearts strongly because we need you, God. We need you, Lord. And we thank you for your promise that you are with us. We thank you, Lord, for your truth that you have written in our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for the empowerment that we can face any challenges that we will go through. And we thank you, Lord, for your comfort, for the peace that comes from you. Salamat, Panginoon. We thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us. And we, Lord, as we face this brand new week, may we experience your presence, your spirit, more and more. Hallelujah. Let's just receive the benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your mercy and your grace in our life, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us. We give you back all glory and honor. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us this Sunday. I believe we all miss each other's smile, but in this time we will back be here again worshiping the Lord together. But remember to join us next Sunday in, in our Sunday worship and also in our Wednesday prayer gathering at 9 p.m. in our FB page. God bless everyone. See you soon.